Hi guys and welcome back to Macaroon! In this video, I'm going to be testing out all the different methods I found for making squishies. From paper to silicone to heat to hydro gel, this is going to be your ultimate guide for squishy DIYs. I'm also holding a huge slime and squishy giveaway this month where you can win this set of macaroon clear slimes and a whole bag of silicone squishies. In order to enter, all you have to do is go to my latest video, which I've linked right here and down below, then leave a comment with a koala emoji in it. The winner is going to be picked randomly from all the comments under that video, but of course, only the ones with koalas are eligible to win. These are all things that we've been giving away for free at fan meets from our German channel, so I thought it's only fair if my international subscribers also have the chance to win. And now without further ado, let's get started with our squishy experiments. The first method for making squishies is the infamous Hitohara gel. The milky colored one is a two-part resin that needs to be mixed together in a ratio of 3 to 1. It's pretty expensive, so I recommend measuring out the exact amount you need based on your mold. Just place it on some kitchen scales and carefully spoon water inside. Then round the number up so it's divisible by 4. This makes it easier to weigh out 3 parts of base resin and 1 part hardener. Mix these together very thoroughly and make sure you don't get any water or dust inside. Even the tiniest impurity can affect the curing process. We decided to play it safe and stick with the default creamy color. If you remember my first Tito Hada gel video, I made two identical koalas and tried using soft pastels to add color. The regular one cured overnight just as it was supposed to, but the pink one stayed sticky. I posted updates for that on Instagram and my username is macaroon so be sure to follow me if you haven't done so yet. But just in case you missed those, this is what happened next. I ended up leaving the squishy for a whole week before it felt solid enough to take out of the mold. As you can see here, it was still really sticky, but after adding a lot of talcum powder, it felt good enough to touch. The texture for this squishy actually turned out amazing and better than any of the others I've made. This really confuses me because Hito Hada Gel says on the packaging that you should only wait 24 hours. The squishy that did cure within that time wasn't very soft and it felt more like rubber. This one, which I originally thought was a complete fail, turned out amazing, but it's impossible to replicate. This only confirms the fact that Hito Hada Gel is expensive and unpredictable to work with, but it can produce amazing results. The same thing happened in our second experiment. The first Chanel squishy cured overnight and it came out of the mold looking great. However, Lisa got super excited stretching it and it simply broke apart. The second squishy took much longer to cure, similar to the pink koala, but again, we have no idea why. This time, we didn't even add pastel dust or anything else which might have affected the curing process. After this one was taken out of the mold, it actually had a perfect squishy texture. It seems that Hito Hada gel pieces that cure overnight as intended have a much higher chance of breaking. Pieces that feel slightly sticky for several days but eventually cure produce a much better result. These are almost identical to silicone squishies despite being made of different materials. And don't forget, if you want to win all of these mochi squishies here, then be sure to enter the giveaway below. The next DIY method is a soft centered squishy. This involves wrapping flexible clay around something soft and fluffy such as cotton wool or toy stuffing. We're actually going to be using the fuzzy lint from inside a dryer, which many people already have at home, but don't realize that it's also good for crafting. To make the clay, you'll need cornstarch and silicone. I first saw this method on the channel MAGA Dolly Life, and I've linked the original video down below, so be sure to check it out. 
Begin by mixing cornstarch and silicone until you get a smooth clay-like dough. I absolutely recommend wearing gloves for this because wet silicone can stick to your skin and it's extremely difficult to remove. Flatten out the dough and add some stuffing or cotton wool to the center. Then carefully close up the opening, making sure that nothing pokes out. Of course, you can add more details at this stage, such as ears if you want to make an animal squishy. And now just leave it to dry overnight. For the final step, you can add details using a mixture of white glue and acrylic paint. As you can see, this squishy is surprisingly soft and elastic, and you can customize it in many ways. It's not quite as realistic as Hitohara gel, but the method is a lot easier and a lot cheaper. The third method is a sponge-based squishy. This is one of the oldest methods for making squishies, and you simply need to cover a sponge using fabric paint. I made this tutorial two years ago for an annoying dog squishy from Undertale using this process. I started using a kitchen sponge, and instead of fabric paint, I simply mixed equal amounts of white glue and acrylic paint together. You do need a bit of patience for this, because the sponge absorbs a lot of liquid, so you have to apply several layers. I think I used about four layers here and had to wait for each one to dry completely in between. On the whole, this method is cheap and produces good results. However, it's not as slow rising as foam-based squishies and you can't stretch them like silicone or Hitohada gel. For a faster variation of this DIY, you can also cut up makeup sponges to make cake slices. Makeup sponges are denser so the paint won't sink inside quite as quickly. And instead of covering the whole sponge, you can simply use a toothpick to create lines across the top. This dries much faster and it's useful if you're pressed for time. Afterwards, you can always decorate the top using some nail polish, glitter, deco cream, or anything else. Once everything is done, you can turn it into a charm or a necklace pendant by attaching a jump ring. And now let's move on to paper squishies. When I first saw this method on YouTube, I was blown away by the creativity behind it. I know some people might not consider this a real squishy, but there are very few DIYs that are so cheap and so easy to make. You simply need some paper, tissues or stuffing, drawing supplies, clear tape and scissors. First of all, fold your paper in half and then use a cup to trace out a round template. Make sure the two pieces are still joined up at the folded edge like this. Paper squishies are basically half crafting and half drawing tutorials. So whatever you want to make, simply draw it out and then color it in. I'm going to make a pig, but you can easily turn this into any other animal. I decided not to use a black outline around the outer edge because this makes it easier to cut out later on. I simply covered everything with colored pencils and then added some shading to make it slightly three-dimensional. When using colored pencils, be sure to overlap several colors in the same area. This makes your artwork look a lot more vibrant and gets rid of that white faded look that many colored pencil pieces tend to have. Now cut everything out and cover the entire front using clear tape. A wide packing tape like this makes the DIY look a bit neater, but of course it also works using regular cello tape. Then take some very small pieces of tape and glue the entire squishy together at the edge, leaving a small gap at the top. For the filling, I'm using shredded tissue paper, but almost anything soft will work just as well. I think that using cotton or felting wool might make everything a bit puffier. After you filled it up, seal off the top and your paper squishy is done. Of course, there's often debate whether or not this is a true squishy, but I really love how easy and convenient this method is. You can make an infinite number of designs just by using paper and your imagination. Method number 5 is a balloon squishy. These were extremely popular two years ago when everyone on YouTube were making stress balls using balloons. The most common technique is to fill them using slime or Orbeez.
We decided to start with slime, but this was actually a lot harder than it looked. Our slime might have been too overactivated, or we were doing something wrong, but we just couldn't get it to flow into the balloon. So we had to accept that this DIY was a fail and decided to move onto Orbeez. First, take a plastic bottle and add your Orbeez inside. Fill it with water and then leave overnight for them to grow. For best results, try to use a transparent balloon so you can see everything inside. We decided to add a handful of glitter to ours to make everything look a bit more extra. Now blow up the balloon and quickly pull it over the bottle. The air provides room for the Orbeez, so just squeeze them all inside. Unlike the slime squishy, this method worked perfectly and it was so satisfying to play with. This DIY is easy and effective, but of course you are a bit limited in the number of designs you can make. If you need more inspiration, then check out my unicorn balloon squishy here, which is actually the most watched video that I've ever made. And the final method is a silicone and baby oil squishy. This technique is used a lot on a Korean DIY channel called Kids Nori. I tried my best to guess the method based on the video since I couldn't understand the text. In most of the videos, it looks like they're mixing household silicone into water containing baby oil or soap. The mixture is then squished around until the silicone has absorbed most of the oil and forms a clay-like ball. This process seems to take a very long time and you definitely need to wear some gloves. Now you can sculpt whatever shape you want for your squishy. The final piece needs to dry completely and it should end up having a softer texture than pure silicone. Our experiment did create a very unusual squishy that felt like soft rubber, but it wasn't as stretchy as the one from the original tutorial. I think this recipe has a lot of potential, but it still needs a bit of fine tuning. We decided to finish up by adding a simple smiley face using black paint and PVA glue. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was useful. And don't forget to click the giveaway link below for your chance to win these two. I'm Joanna and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.